Danny News is back and he's covering ReZero Season 3 Episode 2 cut content. I don't think he did Episode 1 cut content. But then again, it was a pretty comprehensive episode, which was like 90 minutes long. But all right, the farm begins. Hope he had a good vacation. Let's get it. Wrath introduces something entirely new to Subaru. The way her power constantly resonates back and forth leads to this infinitely growing sense of whatever emotion Sirius wants him to feel. Mm. It's this mental torture that's explored more deeply in the novels, along with the whole fight <laughs> more deeply in the novel. <laughs> I know that... Well, as an anime only, if you show them this cover picture, they're gonna make a lot more connections in their head. We've already theorized, we're already like, yep, that's probably Fortuna, yep, the husband, Betrigus Romani Conti, of course it is, of course it is. Everything is pointing towards it, but there hasn't been any actual confirmations. But if you have a light novel cover picture like this, gee, I wonder who the husband could be! ...along with the whole fight that we didn't <laughs> yep. get to see. Subaru had actually channeled his inner Indiana Jones and faced off head-to-head -head with Sirius in a way that was somewhat impressive. That's right. I think that we heard that from Asaratha's cut content, right? When he went in to save Lizbell, actually, for, uh, Sirius is there. Sure, it may have just ended up with him dying anyway, but his whole approach towards it highlighted just how much he'd grown. That whip! So, as I go through that and all the other little details, hopefully you enjoy seeing everything the anime left out from the novels. Okay. I'll be making these every week for every- Wait a minute. Is that Garfield's mom? Novels. It's not, right? The person at the very top here's face, that's not Garfield's mom, right? That's, that's not it at all, right? I was just thinking, like, that'd be very interesting if she was a hostage. I'll be making these every week for every episode, so feel free to subscribe if you want to know everything there is to know about Reason. And like the video! Let's get started. Alright, but first... Episode 52. No ad, no but first. Decisive end of Ice and Fire. Covering chapters 1 and 2 from volume 17 of the light novel. With Subaru having returned from death for the first time in a year, you'd be surprised to know the emotion he was feeling now was anger. It wasn't so much this grim despair or uncertain confusion, but instead this endless resentment towards the fact that he had died. Really? It looked like he was sickened. He was saying, I feel sick, I feel sick, I feel sick, covering up his face. I thought that he was like traumatized and getting PTSD flashbacks because it's been a year, then he suddenly returned by death again. And then also, him cheering on the death of a child, right? And then immediately just spawning. I thought that's what was making him feel sick, but he was mad? You see, it was over a year ago that Subaru vowed never to plunge headfirst into death again, yet that's right. only moments ago he walked right into it. His resolve to challenge every hardship and ordeal with every ounce of strength he had was effectively rendered meaningless in the face of who he now knew as Wrath. So for him to fail the pledge he'd made back during the witch's trial and sanctuary, well, that overwhelmed him with both shame and anger. The I feel sick was that? Really? I- it's- But that's not even him, like, failing. Like, it would be failing if he quit that mentality and went back to, like, let's just keep throwing away every lifeline and see what I can do. The whole thing was, I don't have to die. I can just, like, make use of his powers to the best I can. And then he- And Asatala told him, like, take care of yourself, right? Why can't you realize that this power is meant to save you, too? But this isn't him, like, actively, like, neglecting that mentality, right? It's more of, it's, it's, it's a skill issue. It's literally a skill issue, which isn't even his fault. It's an impossible scenario. I don't think this counts as a failure. It was a brutal combination that would have resulted in self-loathing next, if not for Subaru realizing how little time he had. He is an inc- I, I have never seen anyone loathe themselves as much as Subaru, though. Loathe as in, not necessarily hate themselves, but, like, the level of, like, standards one imposes upon themselves like he is the asian dad telling five-year-old kid why are you not doctor yet but he's the dad and the kid at the same time before all his save points were hours to days before the moment of his death but this time it was only minutes it was a brand new challenge that subaru had never faced before a short now, time it was during all this that priscilla couldn't even be bothered and that actually went to comfort subaru a bit the way it was so in character for her just put him at ease. This Thanks, helped Priscilla. him to compose his thoughts and eventually led to his decision to try things solo. Normally, Subaru- 
when have we ever tried to do things solo and it worked out for us? Has there ever been a moment Super tried to do something by himself and it succeeded? Like, no, right? Every time we try to do this shit ourselves, we get fucked up. Maybe there's like a single moment where he clutches in this small scenario. But in terms of like solving a problem, like this big uh, challenge that we have in every arc, I, I don't think so, right? It's pretty, pretty much he tries to do something by himself, he gets fucked up. Which is the most logical thing to happen because he's pretty much a regular kid with some powers. Subaru would have had no problem asking Beatrice for help, but because Amelia was a likely target, he couldn't risk having her be by herself. You know who's the fucking target here? It's Subaru. Amelia's fine. She is so strong. She is so competent. But I do feel kind of weird how... She, she's not a damsel in distress just yet. We'll see what happens when Regulus takes Amelia away. Because if Amelia is able to kind of like figure shit out and escape or basically not just be completely useless, then that's going to be fine. I, I saw a lot of people complaining that like, damn, Amelia really is just fucking another damsel in distress moment. What happened to all that growth and development and powers, right? Looking like they just kind of showed off her powers and then they gave a convenient scenario where she gets knocked out and, you know, serious fucking, uh, sorry, uh, Regulus saves her and then takes her away. Ever since what had happened to Rem, Super was constantly fearful of a similar fate befalling Amelia. He Don't was so it. traumatized by that that the fear of what could happen drowned out any thoughts of what should happen. Don't jinx it. He didn't ever think that way with Beatrice, though, since regardless of what danger awaited them, Super knew his fate was intertwined with hers now. Okay. His sentiments towards her wouldn't ever stop him from fighting with her since their relationship had crossed that line of resolve long ago. Hmm. We're way more intimate with Biako than we could ever be with Amelia. They were truly a team that would face everything together. Okay. Fast forward now to the confrontation in the tower, and this is where the biggest portion of content was cut. Oh, Not the only fingers. did Subaru approach the whole thing completely different, but his end was a lot- This is a funny frame. No matter what, you're gonna have these frames where the, the camera's so zoomed away that the character just basically have a little dot for eyes, but like... People were memeing on this frame. His end was a lot more disturbing than what we saw. So, it was as Subaru rushed there that he contemplated what happened in the last loop. He didn't know exactly how it was he died, but what he did know was that Sirius induced some type of mental corruption. He had essentially lost his mind and that made remembering things a lot more difficult. Since the memories- Oh, so he doesn't like completely remember everything. I thought that in that trance-like state under the authority, Yes, he is going crazy during that moment, but when you loop, you would be able to kind of like understand everything that happened in like an objective, like third eye, like a third person perspective. He retained after death were influenced by his state during the moment of death. That made assuming anything from the last loop very risky. Okay. That being the case, choosing how to approach this loop was going to be a lot harder. And the most troll thing is the answer is literally in front of us the, every time. I'm not the only one thinking this, right? It's Liliana. Like, if the power has to do with, like, attention and hearing, right? <laughs> it's the most obvious fucking answer. This isn't even a big brain theory. It's the, like, the most unga boonga instinctive just answer. It's her. And the most troll thing, every time we spawn, she's right there. <laughs> she, the answer is just talking to us and we ignore it. We completely, because, like, he's too... Too focused. He's tunnel visioning. He's tunnel visioning. He's thinking there's not enough time. There's not enough time. What am I going to do next? Oh shit, I got to protect Amelia. What are we going to do? But it's like, when is he going to realize that it's in front of him? Like, he could cause a commotion and scatter everyone away from the tower, but that would only end up delaying things. I don't think she'd be affected because all she has to do is just play her song at a distance. And even if it's like in that distance, there's a radio broadcast tower that is just fucking made for Liliana. I thought that maybe it's going to be for serious. Maybe it still can be, but there is a morning radio broadcast that literally everyone can hear. If Leliana plays her fucking song, I think that would be the easiest counter. Sirius clearly didn't have a specific target in mind, so if- But this target moment proves that Sirius herself can understand other people how they're feeling at a glance. She's picked them up saying, you, you, you are mad because I'm wasting your time right now. Sorry, thank you in mind, so if her show didn't happen here, then Subaru knew it would just happen somewhere else. It was a hollow victory that didn't change anything. 
not the type of win that Subaru would be satisfied with. So, Subaru would be a bit more proactive and scope out the tower, until finding that the door was open. There we Inside go. was surprisingly empty, since the magical nature of the clock meant that no mechanical pieces- Yeah, I hope that we use the radio for Liliana to, like, save everyone from the wrath of- uh, Authority of Wrath. And everything is fine, and you think, oh, we have, an, we have an answer, right? Good, good, good. And then, like, some other bishops fuck it up to the point where we have to loop again. And in the next run, Sirius uses the radio tower to give us, like, next level despair. Thinking, like, oh, we have an answer for it. But it's just like, uh-oh, <laughs> she can use it too. This were necessary. It made it so the only things present were the support pillars and a massive staircase. It was a hollow tower in which only his footsteps echoed. Eventually, Subaru had climbed to the point where he could hear Luzbel, but rather than him being by himself, Subaru could also hear the ramblings of the person who captured him. Right there with Luzbel was Sirius telling him just how proud she was of him. The tone sounded right. very reassuring, but the actual words were more like a blessing and a curse. Oh no, he's got younger brothers and sisters. There's even more siblings that Sirius could maybe take hostage of. I don't think they're around though. It made it clear that the person speaking Pride wasn't mentioned. at all. It was from here that Subaru would have to approach quietly, putting to action the silent stepping lessons he was taught by Clint. Su oh, this guy was really getting hyped up at the end of season two. A lot of people liked this guy. Uh, he taught us. He taught us silence. That sounds like some ninja shit, right? That that sounds like some Kunoichi ninja shit. This monocle guy, single glasses dude, taught us how to walk silently. Okay. Subaru's mentor and a steward serving Anaros. Really? Mentor? Taught by Clint. Subaru's mentor and a steward serving Anarose. Anarose and Clint. That important, huh? I mean, she's the one that told Amelia. She's the one that told Amelia about how babies are made through kisses, right? She's, or was she the one that corrected us? I forget. I think she's the one that told Amelia about that. But Clint and Anarose, okay. Clint is a mentor to us. And he's a steward to Anne Rose. She seems to be very, very important. Rose. He's the one who's been training Subaru, and in addition to teaching him- Beyond silent stuff, he's been actively training him? Even the whip? Like that whole like course, the training course in the beginning of episode one? Clint is maybe behind all that? How to walk quietly. He's also the one who taught him how to use his whip. What? A weapon Subaru was now proficient with, enough to be deemed somewhat decent. That's, that's pretty cool. I, I would- Bro, the things I would do to get the cut content that happened in the year gap, bro. Maybe there's some side stories. Maybe there's some other content regarding the, uh, the one year time gap we had. But Clint's mentor trained us. I wonder why Whip. Why did we... Why did Clint think that like Subaru's... Well, because the Whip has some lore, right? The Whip has some, has some lore. Asarath, I think, mentioned. Or maybe it was a kid nut. I'm getting it all mixed up because they all do cut content. The whip is made through the materials of the Guilty Load, the witch beast that we burned alive, you know? But maybe it's a different Guilty Load, I'm not sure. But beyond that, a whip is traditionally used for people who are quote-unquote weak. <laughs> like, it's like the most optimal weapon for someone that's just weak. <laughs> I I'm not really sure. Um, and Clint maybe picked that up. And... I think that I'm definitely underestimating the whip because obviously it's it's a fucking whip, you know. Other dudes got like fucking dragon sword, yang sword, you know. They got they got some crazy ass weapons, and we got a fucking Indiana Jones whip. What could that do? But I I think that like it's gonna come clutch, and complete tinfoil theory. It's probably never gonna work out this way. What 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 about what if the whip's property, like? Can beat Regulus's authority. Now that's a fucking stupid thing to say, right? I know. I know. It's a very insane thing to say that Subaru's whip is gonna counter Regulus. But like, I mean, this this scene actually kind of makes my brain tingle. Look at this scene. Subaru was now proficient with enough. You see that? No, I I don't know how this is gonna help beat Regulus. Maybe this helps kind of explain like invisible hand if you couldn't see it. How the whip could just like wrap around it. I, I guess the whip is good at just like... Because <laughs> like regular seems to have some invisible ship shit around them happening all the time, right? I don't fucking know. But it would be hilarious if the, reg if, if the whip comes in that clutch. It's not like he was an expert, but he did possess a level of mastery. 
How can we use invisible providence with the whip? Will there ever be any need? I think a combo between that power and the whip is kind of pointless. Unless we needed some extra distance that our hands could not reach. That's the only thing I can really think about right now. Yeah, that's about it. That was considered acceptable. The whip itself was a bull whip, just like Indiana Jones's, except Subaru's was a bit longer, making it slightly more difficult to use. Okay. It was a custom gift from Clint, serving as a sort of graduation present. It was a gift from Clint too. Damn. One that bore the name of the demon Guilty beast whip. it was crafted from. That's right, Guilty Low. As for why Subaru chose the whip, well, as a weapon well suited for tricks and feints, it. Clint didn't pick it. Subaru picked it. The whip, well, as a weapon well suited for tricks and feints. It fit nicely with Subaru's own style of fighting. He knew he couldn't compete against swordsmen in a sword fight, but perhaps something like a whip could make things a bit more even. So if there was any weapon that could match his cunning, the whip was certainly one of the best candidates. Thematically, it makes a lot of sense, right? Subaru has never been a Giga Chat swordsman, magic user. No. Bro is a cunning guy who's always just like in the shadows right doing deceptive shit utilities you know st strategy stuff like that the whip is a very fitting weapon for him it may not be the coolest you know it's, it's definitely not the coolest like if you compare again the dragon sword against the whip it's not even comparison but thematically it matches subaru it also gave him the ability to quickly land hits against opponents that were stronger than him so as subaru why is the target a tiger opponents that were stronger than him no the target's a guilty low i thought it was a tiger the entire time because it was like orange it's the guilty low that's kind of fucked up you hitting a guilty low target with the whip made with guilty low what did the guilty low do to you oh yeah season two so as subaru slowly crept up behind sirius he first made sure he was within range to land an attack then quickly wound his whip in a way that emphasized speed over force Which he wasn't so strong that he could knock someone out instantly with it, but if he could at least restrain his target before they noticed, then that on its own was a significant advantage for How him. How did that go? He was hoping to grab hold of Sirius, then toss her over the banister. It was before the whip could even wrap itself around Sirius's neck, though, that Sirius would already be asking Subaru why he was so angry. Why she so hadn't even turned serious? Yet, so <laughs> That's what she... I'm surprised no one's made that joke yet. Why so serious? Dark Knight Joker, but with serious. Why so angry? Why so serious? Somehow she knew that Subaru was in the middle of attacking her. She could even say, do you know how I got these scars? After she takes off the band. She could. I think that the, I think that the, the damage on her face is uh, frostburn from the ice. That's when she would deflect the whip with her own chains, entangling the two together, making both of them useless. Fortunately, this worked in Subaru's favor since all he had to do now was tug to force her off balance. We have a very it was similar just weapon. enough to make her stumble and give Subaru the opportunity to tackle her. A powerful charge that would send her over the banister anyway. That's when Subaru would finally start to save the spell, leading to the events that we saw in the anime. Things are looking pretty if good! You're wondering how Sirius was able to find her way back up, well, somehow she'd managed to fling her chain, Pull Subaru down, then use the resulting force to propel herself back up. I'm imagining Power of God right now, Blue Turtle scene where he uses Anax Whip to like do that elevator cable pulling, basically falling down, pull down, pull up, yep. She'd essentially hit Subaru with the Uno reverse card and left him for death by what was essentially a barbed hanging. This wasn't what made this death so grisly though, since in the midst of Sirius revealing her power, Subaru was descending into a form of madness completely different from the first one. Dude, the way that Annie News like brings up a picture of, you know, Sirius and has like a dialogue like this, this looks like I'm playing a video game. You know? Feels like a... What kind of game is this? It's not a visual novel. This gotta be a direct ref... Like, is, is this visual novel style? To have like the character face show up? Because a visual novel is when you have the whole thing and the passages happen. Persona, yeah! That's what it is, Persona. I, I was thinking about the whole layout. Just like the, the UI, how it seems. With his and Blue Spell's fear bouncing back and forth, stacking on top of each other, the cascading effect it had on Subaru's mind made him lose his very sense of self. That's right, he gets scared, we get scared. We get scared, he gets scared. We just share both things. For him, everything in this moment was now fear. From Sirius's voice to the- <laughs> We even pissed our pants. Yeah, I probably pips my I probably poo my pants too, bro, but <sighs> we pissed our pants officially. Fear. 
from Sirius's voice to the air itself. Absolutely everything, no matter how minute, terrified Subaru down to his very core. Like, he wanted to close his eyes and see no more, but even the dark wanted to scare him too. Ugh. It was after that that the thought of never seeing light again scared him, then it was this thought process that kept spiraling out of control. It went on and on until fear in its purest form became the only thing True that Subaru terror. could comprehend. Cardiac arrest, right? Anymore. To him, fear was the only truth now. So, in the end, Subaru didn't know whether he died from hanging or terror-induced cardiac arrest, but what he did know was that he never wanted to feel that way again. The way he lost everything that made him who he was made him realize that maybe he should ask for help. Yeah, no Luckily, shit! that experience wasn't all for naught, since Subaru now understood a bit of Sirius's resonance ability. What do you think this single tear is supposed to be for Sirius? Now, whenever I see rappers with this kind of tattoo on their face, usually the lore is, that's how many people I've killed. It's some, it's some edgy shit, I don't know. Does that single tear represent Betrugis then? She didn't kill him, but he's like someone that he, she loved and lost. So maybe a tear for each sacrifice? <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, Regulus does have a teardrop earring too. That's not even connected to his like ear. It's just like floating. I don't know what's going on there. But does this tear matter? It has to. Tape wouldn't just like give specific details to a design without it not having some sort of meaning. Right now, it feels like one tear for the loss of Betrugus. ...bit of Sirius's resonance ability. He figured it was an authority that let her manipulate people's emotions. He wasn't quite sure how it worked, but the fact it affected him wanted to show that he wasn't immune to authorities like how he hoped he was. Ever since- Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? It being immune to authorities. That'd be some bullshit fucking power. Wonder if that power exists for somebody, though. Did the Witch of Envy have that kind of power at the end when she collected all the different witch factors and went crazy? Being immune. Now, we're not really immune to authorities, but we are immune to some powers that has to be associated with like the witch or the cult, right? The White Whale, for example. The debuff, the men mental like trauma debuff shit. Subaru was not affected by it. Now, my interpretation of that scene was, it's not that he was so mentally resilient after all those deaths, but it's more of, Something like how he can remember Rem. Something like how like, being associated with the Witch of Envy, he was able to like not be impacted by powers like that. But, you know, a Dwight Whale debuff, that's not the same thing as an authority. Since he was able to resist the authority of Sloth, Subaru hoped his connection to the witches would allow him to resist. Did he resist the authority of Sloth? Authorities like how he hoped he was. Ever since he was able to resist the authority of Sloth, did he resist the authority of Sloth? Now, the visuals that Anius is giving us here is the moment where, you know, the possession happened and Subaru used him as bait and Betrix came in. And if Subaru didn't, you know, call upon Satala, then I doubt Betrix would have been ejected. In fact, he probably would have been taken over, just like episode 23 in season 1, the heroic death. Right? He didn't resist the authority of Sloth. He called upon the witch and kicked him out. The, authority of the scene to hands is a bit different. That's another point. The scene to hands part. And <laughs> no one still knows this, apparently. The light novel readers still don't know this. Like, Tape has not given a fucking reason. The anime only's interpretation is, we couldn't see invisible hand. No one could. It's an, it's an invisible fucking unseen hand, bro. In episode 15, when Rem got twistered. And I thought that Subaru was like, then he died. Then, like, obviously, his witch sent his miasma starts to like stack up and at that point in the future rounds then we were actually able to see the hands i made that connection there but we also know that the miasma level is tapered down as he lives for a long time throughout the one year gap assuming that he didn't use the i can return by death aoe taunt i'm going to assume his miasma has been very flat line to the very bottom but at this current point if we saw the unseen hand from betrigus could be seen or not that would be a very interesting test but we can't see it because she, she, he's, he's fucking dead i don't know of sloth subaru hoped his connection to the witches would allow him to resist all the other archbishop's authorities sirius had unfortunately proved this otherwise but that in itself was valuable information too i still don't think he reject he resisted the authority of wrath i'm uh, sorry authority of sloth the possession shit getting kicked out him seeing unseen hands is that really 
resisting it. I mean, he's talking about cut content. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he knows what he's talking about. Now, regardless of how it was activated, the current circumstances made for quite the same symbol from the box that Flugel gave Better to use for the, the Witch Factor. Predicament. What I mean is that while yes, Subaru could defeat Sirius by blowing up the entire tower, to do so would mean sacrificing Luzbel. Yeah. Shit, how the fuck did Luzbel not die here, man? Or to do so would mean sacrificing Luzbel. To some, this could be seen as a necessary sacrifice, but to Subaru, that was an outcome that he would never accept. Reason being that it went against everything he now currently stood for. Yes and no. If we sacrifice Loose Bell here, do you think Roswell would force a hard reset? Because Roswell is now like, Subaru, okay? You're gonna bake your cake and eat it too? You, be you better make sure that everyone that's important around you, you know, will survive. And you won't sacrifice anybody. Loose Bell is not really someone important to us. He's basically a fucking NPC, you know? I'm thinking that someone that's actually close, like Amelia, or like Ram, like so the core cast of members dying. Then Rosal will probably force the reset, but like, Luzbel, probably not. But to Subaru, his mindset is, I need to save everybody, I guess. He is not... That's why I was telling you, if we had a character like Ayana Koji, in this show, it would be so interesting in moments like this. A person so devoid and detached from, like, humanity, that could make cold decisions. Dude, imagine Emiya Kiritsugu in this show. Imagine Emiya Kiritsugu would return by death. That would be so scary. That would, that would make for some very, very spicy content. Oh my god, I would love that shit for him to just catch. <laughs> imagine, imagine Kiritsugu bombs Pristella. Kiritsugu realizes. Yep, all archbishops are here right now. I'm gonna blow up the entire fucking city. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice the entire fucking city. <laughs> bro, bro, please get Kiritsugu in here! Ever since he made up his mind to not sacrifice himself, Subaru believed he had no right to force others to either. Okay. So if saving one life meant saving many, to Subaru losing that one life was like giving up on the world. Wow, very enlightened, huh? He definitely is not Kiritsugu and... Probably for the better. I think that both spectrums and, and any kind of spectrum in the absolute left and right ends, it's gonna be bad. There's gotta be somewhere that some compromise we could make. He pretty much possessed the exact opposite view of Kuritsugu. Yeah. <laughs> Speak of the devil! Speak of the fucking devil, bro! Holy shit, here he is! What are some other characters I would love in ReZero to have returned by death? Uh, oh, obviously Kiritsugu. Um... I think Ana Koji would be very interesting. I because you know he'd be just cold. A basically, any character that's just so like so cold-blooded black pill to be able to make the immoral decision that needs to be made in a decisive manner, right? Those kind of characters are fascinating. Seeing idiots with this powers might be funny too. Yeah, L Lelouch from you know Code Geass would be very good for this too. Who who else would be very good? I'm thinking about, I, I don't know why I'm mentioning this, but thinking about like Yamauchi. <laughs> why Yamauchi? Because he just fumbles shit. It'd be, it'd be just a fucking the retard run. <laughs> I feel like there'd be some entertainment there. I, I think I'd pull my hair at a certain point of how stupid he's being though. That being the case, overall this was a very tough situation. It wasn't quite enough to induce that level of despair yet, though, since if he couldn't pull this off, then Subaru knew he would question his value as Amelia's knight. Mm. It was a train of thought that led directly to Reinhardt. Dying twice made him forget that he Call was a option, but after racking his mind hard, the obvious answer became clear. Bringing us now to Subaru's third encounter in the square. It was Subaru's concern here that had actually gone to confuse me a bit, since I didn't think, or at least I wasn't aware, that there was in fact a penalty just for sharing information gained via return by death. There is? I thought that we were kind of like, sneaking around that, telling Biko everything we wanted, what the fuck? Personally, I thought it was just about return by death itself, but Subaru was very anxious about revealing information he learned from return by death. I thought that she was he was always fucking doing this. 
as long as he didn't directly state it, but just said, this shit's gonna happen, this is gonna happen, you just have to trust me, but there's a punishment for that? It's something I swear we've seen him do numerous times before. Yeah. In any case, it turns out that despite Subaru not having died in over a year, there were numerous times throughout where when discussing return by death, the penalty for doing so would thoroughly torment him. There was this one instance where he tried to reveal it to Beatrice, Torment. only to experience hell-like pain for quite a few moments after. What? It didn't make him any less willing to share everything with Beatrice though, so as long as there wasn't any true consequential suffering, Subaru was still committed to sharing everything with her. So he just kind of feels a slight burn? <laughs> okay. So like every- he, like the heart doesn't just get grabbed, but- Every time you share details, this forbidden knowledge, right? You get punished slightly, lightly. This did actually help to teach Subaru something, and that was that the severity of the penalty differed. What? Depending on the level of detail being shared about Return by Death, <laughs> along with who exactly it was he was telling it to, the level of suffering would change accordingly. Oh. These were the two factors in which the penalty was directly proportional Who to. Who and what? So, sharing information with someone like Ratchins would be, be as severe as sharing it with someone like Amelia. Amelia. Yeah. It was an interesting connection Subaru constantly had to worry about. Alright, well... I think it's better this way. Because... Im imagine a scenario where he just has so much information, he just gives everything, right? It, it, it feels, again, Tapia does a pretty good job in balancing return by death and implementing punishments and reasons to not even want to use the power. And the forbidden knowledge for it to not be shared, it can be, but just realize there's moderate punishments with it. I, I think that that probably makes it more interesting. One that signified the degree of what Subaru could share depended solely on the whims of the witch. Luckily, Subaru could share quite a bit with Rachin, so in addition to what he said in the anime, Subaru also explained who was going to attack and when it was going to happen. Basically, think of it like this. The more useless, like, like the heavier the punishment is, sorry, the lighter the punishment is, the more you can confirm that they're just a fucking NPC in the overall grand scheme of things. Satala is just picking. You're not important, you're not important. Oh, you can't tell this though to this person though. Ratchins is seemingly not important. I still like Ratchins though. I like his lore of being the runaway noble son from Rickards that we saw in season one. And being like the gang of trios. And being trained by Reinhardt and surviving clashes, encounters with like the strongest people of the ReZero verse. He had essentially given full context on everything. Sirius's entrance after was pretty much the same, except for an additional line indicating a potential mind reading ability. More intensity. I don't know if that's actually what it was, but. I don't think it's necessarily mind reading, but the ability to like understand the feelings, right? Mind reading implies like specific details of a person, but just kind of get, it's like, she's she just like an empath. She's she just the ultimate empath, just vibing. She can understand other people's vibes and how they feel. But somehow she knew that someone was thinking about her with more intensity than expected. A clear indicator that perhaps it's not just emotions that she can share. It was when Reinhardt showed up shortly. But isn't that emotions? Intensity the emotions, right? You're just... What do you mean? She knew that someone was thinking about her with more intensity than expected. Yeah, it's just the magnitude of the anger. Some people are less pissed off, some people are more pissed off. We've seen it on episode 1 when, you know, she picks out three people in the crowd, super included. That's not really details, that's just the intensity, the magnitude of that anger or the feeling. A clear indicator that perhaps it's not just emotions that she can share. It was when Reinhardt showed up shortly after that he immediately deduced how it was Sirius's authority actually worked. So like, what happened here? He's just walking on water. Uh, is he doing something? Is he coating his feet with mana? Like how you do run, like how you walk on fucking water, like fucking chakra, you know, like in Naruto. He literally, this is some Jesus Christ shit, you know. And then the jump as well. Look, up shortly after. Yeah, maybe it could be a divine protection. It, it literally could be divine protection. Reinhardt can walk on water like Jesus Christ. After that, he immediately did. What about this jump though? What What about this jump though? Is that just raw physical strength? Is this also divine protection? I I <laughs> divine protection of number one seed in the NBA combine. Reinhardt has a vertical 
leap of 400 inches. I, I don't fucking know. Deuced how it was Sirius's authority actually worked. Unlike how Subaru thought it was by looking her way or hearing her voice, it was instead through the mere fact of knowing that she existed. That's right. It's not just hearing. If you acknowledge, right, if you know she's there, you're cooked. Anyone who acknowledged her in any way whatsoever was fair game to become affected by her. But there's still this, like, uh, time constraint that keeps being mentioned in episode 1. She mentions, oh, took about 30 seconds to get your attentions. The second time, because Ratchins used a flare to call Reinhardt, more people were focused on the flare and therefore she could get their attentions easier. And she said, oh, only like roughly 20 seconds this time. I'm not sure if she's just counting for fun, but I feel like that acknowledgement, getting your attention, right, that has to do with it. It was a crazy power that even Reinhardt was wary of. I'm sure this was him just being humble, but the thought of even him not being immune really worried Subaru. Sirius would then talk- So can we now say that Reinhardt's literally immune? Like he has just resistance to authorities? Because he didn't get impacted by this shit at all. It's gotta be some sort of divine protection or blessing, right? Talk to Reinhardt a little bit more, basically saying how he was the ideal manifestation of everything she preached about. Reinhardt is the ideal manifestation of everything she preached about. Heart as one. Thank you. I'm sorry. Reinhardt, just perfect guy. Emotion. He's just a humble, humble knight. He's the ideal. The way the masses came together to love him specifically really resonated with the love that Sirius liked to talk about all day. Yeah, hearts were united. Everyone was cheering for Reinhardt to kill Sirius. This is a scene that was kind of confusing to me. And at this point, I should have seen something beyond coming. I'm like, why are they like cheering Reinhardt on? <clears throat> Aren't they supposed to be, you know, Sirius is like goons because they've been impacted by her. But the feelings, it's because of Reinhardt's presence. But I, th but then I was thinking like, this is a bait. I thought that Sirius made this happen for them to cheer them on. Because, obviously, the damage sharing moment, right? But, hmm. Looking like the authority bended to Reinhardt's favor because they're like, Yeah, you can do this, Reinhardt. Kill her, kill her, kill her. But then the moment that happened, whoosh. This conversation didn't really last much longer, though, as Reinhardt would quickly engage in what can only be described as aerial combat. True. I know to us that doesn't seem very ridiculous, but to Subaru, Reinhardt's power was just becoming absurd now. The way he handled Sirius's chains was pretty crazy too, since with only his foot, he was able to gain complete control over them. Bro, he's so ridiculous. He's fucking just chop chop zero sword style, bro. He's so sick. It was a beat that made Subaru think Reinhardt was a literal superhero now. He is! The rest of the fight was pretty much the same, aside from Luzbel bearing the first signs that injury was shared with Sirius too. Although Subaru didn't understand at the time, when saving Luzbel, there were bruises on his arm that weren't there before. Injuries that are later hinted as one Sirius received during her fight with Reinhardt. Okay, okay. So cut content is now confirming that the injuries were being shared. Because like, I was like, why did everyone get chopped in half and Ryan chopped them, but Reinhardt was fighting Sirius? Like, nobody seems to be taking any damages. It did happen in the source material. So... The power, who knows, maybe there's like less damage you take if you're more distance away. I was always trying to think about how much does distance matter for her authority, but it's seeming like during the aerial fight, like, it literally, we did get injuries. Sirius also didn't just accept her fate either, and instead actually tried to flee by propelling herself away with her chains. Reinhardt of course caught her instantly, then chopped her in half along with everyone else. Ooh. It was the first time that Subaru had ever died so cleanly. A demise so quick that rather than pain, the only thing Subaru could feel after was surprise. Yeah, the bar. A lot of people are saying that Reinhardt kill himself. We analyzed that frame over and over again. The the body that's falling down to end that scene in that transition way was not Reinhardt's. It was Subaru's basically like you know standing lower half of his body. It was not Reinhardt that ended himself. This did, however, provide the information he needed to understand how he died in the first loop, so now he knew Sirius's power wasn't just a resonance of emotions, but also a transference of physical conditions too. Yeah. It was enough of a problem to get Subaru to seek out more help. It was in this scene that I was hoping to find more information on Reinhardt's power, but what we saw was pretty much all we got. His dominion over mana made everyone else's non-existent. 
Exactly. It's not that Sirius wasn't using her magic during the fight against Reinhardt. It's that Sirius couldn't use her magic. Mana is just obeying Reinhardt. If he exists there, he basically dominates that shit. Sure, this was definitely OP, but at the same time, it was also very much inconvenient. It made it so none of Subaru's allies could stand on the same field together. Individually, they were all very much formidable, but together, well, there was no plan Subaru could come up with which would let them all reach their true potential. That is an interesting situation where if you're fighting alongside with Reinhardt, everyone kind of becomes useless. Especially magic users, right? Because if Reinhardt just just like basically monopolizing the mana. Now we've seen Reinhardt, he, he can control it. Amelia was literally healing Romji in Arc 1 because Reinhardt allowed the mana to be shared that time, right? It's not like he exists there and just becomes a vacuum. But if he's there, then a lot of people can't perform. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's like a really good thing. We don't need Reinhardt to be operating with us. It's actually very inefficient. We may have an army, but simply adding Reinhardt to that army, I think that's very useless because we now know, you know, if we share the proximity, it's going to be bended. But Reinhardt himself is a one-man army. So we can just send him off to do take care of the separate things that an entire army would take, you know? So <laughs> it's kind of sad, but there, there is a reason to kind of isolate and send Reinhardt to different places. He himself is an army that doesn't need to be with us. Now... After there was this whole conversation about how Ceres' authority was similar to the high-level spell Nect. But it wasn't, right? Biko was like thinking it could be Nect, and maybe I can use Shamak to counter it, but we realized, no, the authority does not. It's, it's not. Leading to the basis behind why Shamak should work against it. Since that whole theory was immediately disproved, wah, though, wah. I can see why the anime decided to cut it. Ceres' authority was more a curse that manipulated the soul itself. Not some heretical abuse of a spell that let you share senses. That's why Shamak wouldn't work against it. This brings us then to Amelia, whose astute observation highlighted Subaru's emotions right now. Okay. The reason she could tell that Subaru was about to cry was because deep down- Because she been spending like so much time with this fucking schizo bipolar motherfucker. Think about how Amelia feels. She probably good at this by now. Because to her, Subaru at any moment could just- Change personality, like the mood swing is just whoosh. To us, it makes sense. But think about the successful time loss that Amelia exists in. Whenever she's time, spending time with Subaru and he dies and then he returns by death. Dude, the mood swings must be so fucking crazy. To the point Amelia's like, oh, it's his time of the month again, uh-oh. Now Subaru was terrified. He just died three times in an hour, which was far more death than he was used to. That's not to say that he would ever get used to dying, but to do so so often was far more than what he'd handled before. His future was constantly being robbed from him in a way that was unacceptable. His soul defiled and his vow completely shattered. Defiled. This is what it meant every time he died, so to have his existence trampled like that didn't really sit well with him. Fast forward to the actual fight now, and Sirius didn't come out unscathed by Amelia's attack. Oh? Half her bandages were soaked in blood, her left arm dangled as if broken, and her demeanor clearly unsteady and bad. Yo, Amelia! What shocked Subaru more than that, though, was the way that Sirius just completely ignored him. She didn't even register that he was there, but instead- Because he's so insignificant right now. And the Amelia in front of her. Sirius probably- I think that Sirius knows that this is Amelia. It's Amelia. Camp. But she probably sees Satala in Amelia, and just- considers her a home wrecker in more than one sense because better goose is worshiping satala and wants the witch to come back but also emilia's camp did kill better goose there's got to be everything kind of combined and her projecting her anger at amelia instead focused solely on amelia and beatrice the fight itself showcased amelia's brand new style of combat which superu himself dubbed as ice brand arts I love this. This is so much cooler than just like staying back and just shooting like ice shards. Her going in melee range, swapping different weapons, it's so sick. Which Subaru himself dubbed as Ice Brand Arts. It was a way of fighting that took full advantage of her massive mana capacity. One that constantly reformed her weapons, allowing her to launch high speed combo attacks. She would go in fully intending to break her weapons of ice, then immediately reshape them into something new. To Subaru, it was a beautiful display that made him feel like he was watching. 
I do think she recognizes Amelia. But not the Amelia from the past. I think that these archbishops have some base knowledge of the politics and the diplomacy at play. I think that the archbishops are literally here, pre-planned. They took one day to set up. Who knows, maybe multiple days. To us, it looked like they appeared one day before. I think that Anastasia knew that they were getting attacked by archbishops and invited all the different candidates over. And I think that Sirius recognizes who Amelia is in this current realm as a candidate for the throne, but can't make the connection of her being Fortuna and taking care of Amelia in the past. That's my assumption at this current moment. Most likely due to Pandora. Watching a fairy dance. To others, this was more a dance of ice and fire. It was in the meantime that Subaru was dealing with Sirius's soul-washed minions, tossing who he could into the waterway, then literally parkouring his way up to Luzbel. It was yet another one of the skills that Clint had taught him, and Subaru was making sure to make good use of it here. We didn't get to see him parkour? What the fuck? Bro, give, Subaru hardly ever gets time to shine in combat or movement or action. You, I want to see that shit, man. Now, there is a bit more to Amelia's fight, but that's actually something that I'm going to save for next week since okay. I'm not sure if they'll include it in the next episode or not. Good call, any so, news. So, for now, that's everything about Season 3, Episode 2, and pretty much all that I got to say for it. All right. If you liked the video, then leave a like, and if you... Yes, sir. Guys, please go check Mr. Anius' content. Here's the link. Sub to his channel. Like the video if you haven't. And I will see you next time.